Kitola Samuel here. You're welcome to today's masterclass of the 90 days of breakthrough. We're still talking about how to end the year better than you started it. And very instructively, I want to say to you today that you need to confront your fears. You need to confront your fears. If you're going to end the year better than you started it, you've got to get rid of the fears in your heart. You see, fear has limited many people, you see, more than the devil ever has. Oftentimes, when the devil even wants to limit you, you know how he does that? Is by sending fear into your heart. Most times, people think that fear is a feeling. Fear is more than a feeling. Fear is the devil's emissary. That's why the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. He says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but as power of love and of a sound mind. Did you see that? It's very important. If you're going to end the year better than you started it, you've got to confront your fears. The reason you've not taken certain steps, the reason you've not made certain decisions, is because you have been afraid. I've come to tell you that in case you don't know. It's fear. Oftentimes people see it as considerations. In what if, when you begin to ask those foolish what if questions, that is fear talking. That is fear talking. All right, don't let fear limit your destiny. Fear has limited so many destinies, limited so many people's lives. All right, limited so many things. Don't allow yourself to be part of the statistics of the people fear destroy their lives. I'm always reminded of the story of the five talent, the three talent, and the one talent man. All right, scripture says that their master was going on a journey and he gave them, you know, talent. Talent in today's equivalent is money. All right. And the Bible says after a while the master came back and you know, he was receiving you know, a detailed report of how they managed the money. And the Bible says that the first guy that was given five talents, he doubled it. The other guy, the next guy to him, maybe two or three talents there about, the guy also doubled it. But the guy that was given one talent, the Bible says he did nothing with it. And when the master asked him why the least you could have done, you see, is to give my money to the bank. And at least I would have gotten some interest on it. You know what the guy's response was? Then that's from Matthew chapter 25. He said, I was afraid. And I went and hid the talent in the earth. I was afraid. I was afraid. I was afraid. Let me tell you this. There are some things fear will do to you. Fear is going to discourage you from taking risk. And everything worth pursuing in life, all right, there's a measure of risk attached to it. Nothing is risky as a life without risk. If I let me say this, it is risky not to take risk. And one of the things fear will do to you is that it will stop you from taking risks. Everyone that has done anything phenomenal, done anything outstanding, they have to take a risk in order for them to turn out the way they turned out. Another thing fear will do to you is it will limit your capacity. You see, if that guy had not had the capacity to double at least that talent, the master wouldn't have given it to him. Because the Bible says that the master gave to them according to their several ability. So he gave the guy five talents that was given five talents because he knew that he could double five talents. And he gave the guy that could, you know, yeah, the one talent guy, uh, the one talent because he believed that he could at least double the one talent. He could do something about it. But his fear limited him. His fear stopped him. You see, in life, when you allow fear to limit your capacity, you will not attract any success. You will not attract the things that you desire. And you cannot even attract anything into your life that is beyond your level of capacity. Alright? That's why success is first within and then without. It's first within and then without. Don't let fear turn you into a zero talent man. Because that was what eventually happened to the one talent guy. What he hid was eventually taken away from him and given to the five talent guy. So from the one talent man, he became a zero talent man because of fear. Don't allow fear to limit you. All right? Don't allow fear to limit you. Fear of, you know, fear of the future, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of criticism, fear of the past, fear of error, fear of uncontrollable forces. Many people are limited by fear of error. What if I miss it? They miss it. I always tell people, I would rather miss it, try to follow God, right, than doing nothing. And the Bible says the steps of the righteous man are ordered by the Lord. When God knows I'm doing it from the right motive to please him, he will cause correct my steps. He will ensure that I don't miss it. Even if I miss it, he will give me another opportunity to get it right. I would rather miss it, try to follow God, right, than miss it, try to follow men. 
For some people, it's fear of uncontrollable forces. The fear of the village people. That's why they are not doing the things they are supposed to do. They've allowed fear to grip their heart. You know, they believe, ah, if so a person knows about this thing I'm about to do, then it will not work out on that. Not saying you tell everybody about your plans and your goals. You have to be discreet and you have to be discerning. All right? Because some people carry dangerous, toxic, and negative spirits. Of the truth, there are some people when you tell them what you want to do, forget it, that thing will never happen again. Except you go to the place of intense prayers. And some people, it's not witchcraft. It's just that they carry a negative spirit around them. All right? To so expose them to your dreams, your goals, and your plan is to guarantee that that thing will never happen. Okay? Fear of uncontrollable forces. Let me tell you this. All these things are in place, all right, in the life of everyone who also succeeded and who does well in life. But they make up their mind that this thing is not going to determine the steps I'm going to take. All right? So don't let the fear of the future hinder you. Don't let the fear of your past failure. You have failed before and so what? Everyone that has succeeded has also failed. Don't let your failure in the past, don't let it you know, affect the risk that you're supposed to take in the future. For some people, it's fear of success. They are afraid, oh, if I succeed, will I still have my same old friends? Will my parents still accept me with my, you know, uh, siblings still relate with me the same way? Let me tell you, this fear of success is real. It's real. For some people, it's fear of criticism. Oh, what are people going to say about me? If I do this, if it doesn't work out, they're going to say I'm too ambitious. They're going to say I'm too this, I'm too that. That's not your business. Do whatever it is you're going to do. Another thing fear is going to do to you is fear will make others to leave you behind. The five talent guy, the two talent guy, and the one talent guy were one time, they were colleagues. But eventually, he was casted out. The Bible says the master said, cast him out to where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. So they stop being colleagues. His fear made his colleagues to leave him behind. I pray for you. Your contemporaries will not leave you behind. In the name of Jesus. When your contemporaries are lifting up their head, you also will be able to lift up your head. In the name of Jesus. You will not serve your mates. You will not bow before your mates. In the name of Jesus. When you see people, right, who are serving their mates, whose heads are bowed low among their contemporaries, go and check it. Somewhere in their life, you will find fear in the equation of their life. Fear, fear, fear. It will make others to leave you behind. It will make your contemporaries to become your superiors. But that will not be you in Jesus' name. Fear will also keep you from having more and even make you lose what you already have. And such is the story of Job. In Job 3.25, he said the things that I greatly fear has come upon me. What was he afraid of? Ah, one day I may lose everything. One day my kids may die. One day my properties may be lost. One day my wife may leave me. One day, you know, he kept having that fear. And in Job chapter 1, the Bible says that any time his children will throw a party, he will go make sacrifices trying to appease God. But he didn't negate the fact that he was living in fear. And so fear will make you lose the things that you already have. Don't allow fear in your heart. In Genesis 1 and verse 26, the Bible says, Let us make man in our own image. After our own likeness, it says, And let them have. Let them have. God wants you to have good things. He wants you to have the best of this earth. He didn't create the abundance of the earth for the devil and his crowd. No, he created it for his children. All right? So don't let fear stop you from having. Some people are afraid of having more. You see, the more you have, the more influence you can have, the more impact you can make, the more we can spread the gospel all over the nations of the earth. All right? These 90 days of victory is made possible because the resources, because the resources were available. Some people are always afraid, hey, if I have more, I will, I, I will miss God. If I have more, you know, I, I, I may become, become obsessed with material things. You see, if I have more, I will forget God. That it simply means you are not grounded in the faith. You are not grounded in the faith. And let me tell you this, if you have that fear, that is eventually what is going to happen. Don't be afraid, all right? If you are watching this with someone, why don't you tell the person, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, all right? Another thing fear will do to you, is like to keep you on the same spot. You see, you can stay on the same spot for 38 years like the man at the pool of Bethesda and you will not know that time is passing by. Until one day you will see your colleagues and be like, ah, you've grown older. And they will tell you, you're actually the one that has grown older. We have aged, but you have been streaking in years. You know, it is one thing to grow old. It's another thing to be streaking in years. All right? To be streaking. It simply means life has dealt with you. Life will not deal with you. In the name of Jesus. So fear will keep you on the same spot. If you keep you on the same spot, the man at the pool of Bethesda was there for 38 years. 
the fear, you see, how, you know, the man knew what to do. He was the one telling Jesus, anybody that gets into the pool right first will be healed. Okay, you know what to do. Why didn't you do it in the last 38 years? You'll be shocked. Fear can keep you on the same spot for 50 years. You are telling every other person what to do. They do it, they move on, but you just never do it. Why? Because of fear. Because of fear. Fear will make your life meaningless. You do nothing, you end up becoming nothing. You will not die as a non-entity. Ah, I pray for you once again. You will not die as a non-entity. I decree and I declare, you will not die as a non-entity. Let me tell you this. Every non-entity, you know, that you see today, roaming the streets. Have this ever happened to you? You see some people in their older years and you are wondering, what did you do with your life when you were younger? They didn't take risks. They didn't take risks. They live so comfortably, you know, and the thing about comfort is this, it doesn't last. You have to keep taking risks. Let me tell you this, everything you have achieved today, if you are going to get to your next level of success, listen to me and listen very well. If you are going to move to the next level, you must risk everything you already have now. Did you hear what I just said? If you are going to move to your next level, you must risk your level of comfort. The price for your future is your present. You see, for God to take it down to the next level, to activate the next dimension of the blessing and the covenant he had with him, he told him, sacrifice everything you have in the name of Isaac. I know this is your future, but sacrifice it. Let go of it. Fear will not allow you to take such a risk. It was after he did that that God said, Ah, seeing that you did not hold back your son, your only son from me. He said, Now I know. Ah, now I know. He said, In blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. And God began to release, invoke blessings upon him. Why? Because he was willing to risk everything he had. When you see people that their future, you know, they have stories of that. I remember when I was younger, I had two cars, I had multiple drivers. So, what happened to you now? You are roaming the streets with your legs. It's because at a point in their life, they were supposed to risk all they had for the next level, but they didn't take that risk. They didn't take that risk. It's not everyone that does not know what to do. If I let me tell you this, especially in this age and time, most people know what to do, but they are too afraid to do what they know they are supposed to do. And what fear does is that it will make your life meaningless. I pray for you once again, your life will not be meaningless. Another thing fear will do to you is that fear will stop you from experiencing breakthroughs. Fear will stop you from experiencing breakthroughs. Remember the story of the four lepers that delivered the whole city. The Bible says in God's report, and you see that story in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3 to 18. As lepers, they were not allowed to live in the city. So they were hungry. There was hunger in the city anyway. So nobody was going to come out of the city to even give them hand out. So there was an enemy nation coming to fight them or fight their city. And the Bible says these guys came together and said, you know what? If you go into the city, we're going to die. If you go into the enemy's camp, we're going to die. And they said to themselves, why are we going to go to city and die? At least let's do something. Let's go to the enemy's camp. Perhaps they are going to have mercy on us. Give us food. And the Bible says in the morning, when they go to the enemy's camp, everything had been left. What was needed to feed the whole nation was found in the enemy's camp. And the Bible tells us what happened. That, the, you see, the enemy, as the lepers began to move towards the camp, they were hearing the footsteps of a large army. And the Bible says that they were afraid that, ah, the king, you see, of Israel has hired, you see, mercenaries to fight against us. Guys, let's run. And everything they brought to the battlefield for camping, they left everything behind. What simply happened is as they were taking steps towards the camp, God was amplifying their footsteps, making it sound bigger and larger than what it actually was. Let me tell you this. It's the steps you take that God will amplify. It's the things you say that God will amplify. It's the proposal you submit that God will place his favor upon. Okay? If you do nothing, you be nothing. And if you do nothing, if you allow fear to stop you, you will never experience your desired breakthroughs. I pray for you today that in your life the spirit of fear is rebuilt in the name of Jesus. Fear will no longer have control over your life. Fear will no longer have access into your life. I decree and I declare in every place where fear has made an identity for you, of you, may you be delivered right now in the name of Jesus. From today I decree and declare every damage that fear has done to your life, in those areas, may there be a quick restoration. May there be a speedy restoration. 
in the name of Jesus. You will no longer be in there. You will no longer be limited. You will no longer be stopped in the name of Jesus. The favor of God will speak for you. It will answer for you. Help will come for you in the name of Jesus. As I've said it, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great day. See you in the place of prayers tonight by 9 p.m. West African time. Invite as many people as you can to be a part of tonight's prayers. It's going to be hot. Hallelujah. God bless you.